Be inspired on Liberty Radio. What is happening to this world? We are clearly living in a period that no other generation has ever experienced. Do not despise the evidence of what the Word of God has warned. And you must be prepared. This Wednesday, we shall have the continuation of the series, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. At 7.30pm at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N43NX or at your nearest Universal Church. Good evening everyone, welcome to Be Inspired. And tomorrow will be the third Wednesday that we will look into the meaning of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We have now understood that the first horseman, the white horseman, represents the Antichrist. We then had the red horseman that represents war. And tomorrow we're going to go and understand what the black horseman represents. And as we've always said in the past few weeks, we are not doing a Bible study on the four horsemen of the apocalypse for you to panic or for you to prepare for what will happen in the, in the Great Tribulation. Because as we've said, you are not supposed to be here. If you belong to the Lord Jesus, you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are saved, you are not supposed to be here during the Great Tribulation. So we're not doing this study so that you can prepare like we said last week that the preparation for the Red Horseman is not to prepare a bunker in your backyard so that if a bomb explodes you can hide. No, the preparation for the Red Horseman is that we don't prepare because we're not supposed to be here. We prepare for the rapture. But tomorrow we'll continue with this Bible study and I advise you that you take part in your local, your nearest UCKG here in Finsbury Park. I'll be here in the morning service 10 a.m. and also in the evening at 7.30 p.m. and I believe it will be a blessing. Join us. If you'll be in your local UCKG, I'm sure that God will speak to you as well. Now, tomorrow, when we come for this program, we are going to show the video of the Caleb group, the video they prepared for tackling hunger. Remember, last week we had a video from the VYG. Well, the, the Caleb group will not take this lying down. So they've prepared a video. Tomorrow we're going to show it here. But now let's watch the next video of the tackling hunger that the pastors have prepared. And then we'll come back in just a moment. Here we are with our Hammersmith Caleb team. We're going to go now to Lidl's and we're going to, we're taking up the 10 pound challenge. Let's go to Lidl's and see how it goes. I also joined the challenge, the 10 pound challenge. I'm here at a local supermarket and let us see how many kilos I can get with the 10 pounds. I'm here in Newcastle about to do my 10 pound challenge. Let's see how much I'll be able to collect. We are here in Belfast, Northern Ireland. We are also doing our part. I'm going in and let's see what we can get with only 10 pounds. Tackling hunger. Let us see how many items we can buy, we can gather with 10 pounds. How much did you spend? <laughs> 20 pounds. How much did you spend? Uh, £9.98, Pastor. How, How much did you spend? I spent £10. £10. Yeah, pounds. I have all of these. So as you can see, almost 10 kilograms. Join us in this challenge and let's together tackle hunger 
across the UK. And we managed to do 9.1 kilos with 10 pounds in order to tackle hunger. And this is what we've got with around 15 pounds. Let's tackle hunger. All right, so mission accomplished. With over 10 pounds, we managed to get more than eight kilograms. Let's tackle hunger together. All of them can come, but we want to thank Tackling Hunger Initiative, and it's going to be a blessing. This match will kick off at 4.30 p.m. on Sunday, 22nd October, at the New River Sports and Fitness Center. Doors will open at 3.30 p.m. If you would like to join us in this cause, you are invited to donate five kilograms of non-perishable food items to your local universal church. This can then be exchanged for a ticket to the football game. We aim to raise as much food as we can to help out as many people as possible. Help us to reach our goal as we tackle hunger, one person at a time. The food collected will be used in all our food banks and soup kitchens nationwide. Don't forget when you bring your donation of food to collect your ticket so that you can take part of the football event of the Tackling Hunger on the 22nd. Jeff and Lewis wrote here in the chat, that's my pastor. Jeff and Lewis, which one? There were many pastors there. And you didn't write here which branch you are from. Let us know. And if you saw your pastor, <laughs> if you saw your pastor there in the video, let us know. I saw my pastor. By the way, Pastor... Felipe Biral is already in Wolverhampton. You saw him there. He's already starting to do services in a university there in Wolverhampton. And in November, the 26th of November, if my memory doesn't fail me, we're going to inaugurate the brand new church in Wolverhampton. Let us know in the chat window if you saw your pastor there and who your pastor was. Hey, I saw my pastor, pastor so-and-so. He's the pastor of my church. We're going to see now a testimony of one more person who understood the importance of asking for help and how her life changed. And you're going to see what happens in a moment through the Bible, how when someone really wants help, nobody can stop them. No one can stop a person who wants help. Let's watch this testimony together. From my background and a young age, I was just searching for help. Well, my mom didn't intentionally decide to put me to the side and disregard me. Her having a child brought her some sort of joy and gave her more attention, my sister that was born, than myself. And because I was the youngest child in the house for a very long time until she came around the age of when I was eight years old, that's when it really reflected that something was like a way of her using her love that she had or what she had left to give was for her mainly, even though she may not have consciously realized she was doing that. Growing up as a child, I really saw um, having friendships was my way to basically resort to having like what I was seeking for, the help, the love that I desired. But as I grew up and have different friendships, I would see that as I would speak to them, tell them, oh, at home, you know, I'm not really just like seen or I'm not really given attention. They would say the same because they were in similar circumstances. The more I grew up, the more deeper my sadness, my depression went in. The worst moment in my life, I would say, is when I was actually the ages of 17, roughly. And I was actually in a relationship with someone and it was where like I felt like I was given everything just so that I could receive, but I wasn't receiving anything. And it came to a point where I found that he was doing multiple things with other women or other people that he per se would be his friends when really it wasn't his friends. I committed or tried to commit suicide around five times, but I really attempted three times. It really had an effect, so much so I remember leaving my house thinking, I'm just gonna end it all, I'm just gonna take my life because what's the point of me living? And then at the same time in my household is my family wouldn't really like 
regard me because they would think I just want to do whatever I want. And it came to a point where I went to the River Thames in my area and I was standing there thinking like, is this, like, I'm actually gonna do this because there's no point to live. The person that supposedly said loves me, he doesn't. Then there was a voice in my head saying, there's no point in me going. But then there was another voice in my head telling me that I should go. As I was in this dark time, I did try to find help, but in the wrong thing. So such as going out with friends, and trying to be like them, because I knew trying to go out to drink, um, to smoke weed, I would think that was my way of surviving. I think that's something that's helping, but then at the same time, the next day when I'd wake up, I still feel the same as how I felt, but worse. I had a family friend that was actually coming to the UCKG, and she invited me for actually one of the VYG events that was going on. As I received help coming to the UCKG, it really showed me that there are people that are genuinely for you. As I had external friends from a long period of time, but the help that was given here in the UCKG was not the same as what I thought I was getting outside. If I needed help, if I needed counsel on how I was thinking, how I was feeling, they were really there to support me. I could say having the Holy Spirit has really helped me because every day everyone faces negative thoughts. It's not immune to anyone. The Holy Spirit guided me through the word that's given maybe from going to services or even just in my own personal moments. It's really, really guided me to overcome my own thoughts. My life today, I would say, is, is completely different. I can say with my family, I don't feel like an outcast. I don't feel like I'm left to the side. Instead now, my family even come to me for help. My mom shows me even more love because she sees the change in me. And she does the same with my siblings, that no one now is disregarded. As much as I have many siblings, she makes her way to give love equally to every single person as possible. My friendships that I have now, they really add to me. They don't take away from me. It's where they really say, you know what, if you're going through this, I'm here to help, I'm here to guide, I'm here to support you. And also, I'm currently studying or going back to uni. And through this, even me going back, it was an inspiration that I got to study so that I can help other people who are facing mental issues or mental battles in the mind. It really reflects on me that if I didn't have the peace I have today, the help that I was given, I wouldn't be able to support people the way I can now like before and it's only by coming to the Universal Church that I receive this help that now I'm able to give to others what I have on the inside. I want you to have a look at a slide we're going to put on the screen right now that depicts exactly what happens in the world, but also what many people are not willing to do. Are you ready? Let's, pu let's put the sentence there on the screen. Have a look at, at that sentence on your screen. Everyone suffers. Please keep, keep the sentence there on the screen. Everybody suffers. There is no doubt that everyone in the world suffers. And actually, even people who are in the presence of God, sometimes they go through moments of momentary suffering. Everyone suffers, but not everybody asks for help. And that is exactly the picture of what happens in the world. You see that there are people who are struggling, who are suffering, but they are too proud to ask for help. Sometimes the person needs help, but they don't want to seem weak or they, for different reasons. Sometimes you can see that someone in your family is struggling, but the person is too arrogant, too proud to ask for help. You know they need help. But there was a man in the Bible who actually experienced something very different. A man who was suffering, and when he asked for help, everything was against him. Even what wasn't supposed to be against him was against him. But let's learn a lesson from him how he dealt with that. Let's look at the story of blind Bartimaeus. So God's Word says in the Gospel of Mark chapter 10 from verse 46, Now they came to Jericho, and as he, Jesus, went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. 
And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Let's stop there. Let's go back to the previous verse. So here we see Bartimaeus asking for help. If we can put the verse on the screen and just keep uh, the headshot there on the screen as well next to it. So here we see what some people do. Now, there is no doubt that Bartimaeus was suffering. And he was suffering, we can see he was suffering in two descriptions there in the Bible. First of all, he was suffering because he was blind. And secondly, he was suffering because he was begging. He needed alms, he needed handouts in order to survive. In that time, there was no welfare for people who were blind. You had to fend for yourself. But he was one of those that was suffering and he asked for help, right? Not one of those who was suffering and was too proud to ask for help. But when he did ask for help, when he said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Look what happened afterwards. And look what happened from the people who were supposed to help him. Now, the next verse, you're going to see people that were charged by the Lord Jesus to help him. Look at their reaction. Let's go to the next verse. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, even more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Look at what a person who needs help and who is humble enough to recognize they need help, look at what they do. Nobody can stop them. But Timaeus, even though when he asked for help, he was, he was shut down by the people who were there who were supposed to be helping him. They tried to quiet him. But instead, he cried out even more. And we see this kind of faith many times in the church. We see people who come to church sometimes for the first time or not, it doesn't matter, with great faith. You know, I, I remember when I was an assistant in the church in the city where I served as an assistant, public transport was very, very poor. And we had people who traveled sometimes two hours on the train and then they walked another 45 minutes to get to church and they would have to make that journey back because they believed by going to God's house they would receive the help that they needed, miracles. And there was no doubt that people who did that, they saw the hand of God moving over their lives. Bartimaeus saw the hand of God moving over his life. And so we see that when a person wants help, they need help, and they cry out for help without letting anything to stop them, the help comes. I have here with me tonight Pastor uh, Reese from our church there in Hackney. Pastor Reese, good evening. Good evening, Bishop. How good are evening, you? Never. I'm very well, Bishop. Thank Pastor Reese, I'm sure you've seen in the time that you've served God there uh, as a married pastor there in the church in, in Sheffield and now in Hackney. You've experienced this. People who, they, they've, they've come to the church. I, you know, there in, in Sheffield, if my memory doesn't fail me, uh, people have to go up the stairs, right, to go to the auditorium. We don't have a lift no, there. No. And I believe there are people who probably, they experience going up the stairs in Sheffield with pains on their legs, in their knees, you know, struggling, but they wanted help, so they went in. And as a result, they were healed. I'm sure you experienced that there and Hackney as well. And this shows us that when a person is desperate for help, nothing can stand in the way of the miracle. Yes, Bishop, exactly as you're saying. When we have something inside of us called the power of determination, when we determine something to happen, nothing will be able to stop us. And like Bishop, you're saying, We've seen many miracles in the church. We've seen people that even sometimes we felt sorry for them because we saw their condition and we felt sorry for them, but they didn't even feel sorry for themselves because they were determined that they were coming and they would never leave the church the same way again. And when they came, they were healed. They were able to throw away their sticks. They were able to become free from thoughts and, and things that bombarded their minds when they had schizophrenia, people had schizophrenia, and they left that place free because whereas the world could not give them the help, they came determined in the house of God that they can get the help, and they received that help. And this has to be your faith 
This has to be the faith of the people that will come to you or will come with you on the help event. You know, right now, we don't have the handkerchiefs here in the studio with us anymore to have them blessed because they are on the altar inside of the ark. And I would like to show you now uh, a brief description how the handkerchief can be used from the 15th, how you will be able to use the handkerchief. And in fact, you can show this video later to your friends, to your family, so they can see how you use your faith. But I want you to remember what you learned here today. When a person is determined to receive help, my friend, no one can stop that help from coming. No pastor can stand in the way. No family can stand in the way. Nobody can stand in the way. Can we put the sentence there on the screen again, pastor, please? Remember, to suffer, everybody suffers. But suffering does not mean you will receive help. Because in order to get out of that situation, you have to ask for help. And that's what's going to happen on the 15th in every church. Let's understand how you can use the handkerchief by faith. The handkerchief that you will receive at the help event is a point of contact for you to obtain what you determine by faith. Here is how to use this tool of faith. If you have someone who is sick, you can touch a part of their body or their bed with the blessed handkerchief. If you are dealing with family problems, for example a broken family, you can touch the picture of your entire family if you have one. If you are looking for employment or trying to set up a business, you can touch your CV, your tools or your business plan with the blessed handkerchief. With all these scenarios, remember that you have to believe, pray and determine the outcome you want to happen. We believe that God will honor your faith, so take a first step of faith and collect your blessed handkerchief at the help event. On Sunday, 15th October at 10 a.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N43NX, or at your local universal church, because everyone needs help sometimes. Remember, the woman with the issue of blood who came to the Lord Jesus, in her mind, she had made up her mind, she had determined, she believed that if she could break through the crowd and touch Jesus' garment, she would receive help. That's what happens. When you want help, when you seek help, nothing can stop you. And I would like to pray for you right now. I want to pray for you that you want your family in the presence of God. We started the purpose of the shelter, the family in the shelter of the Most High this Sunday. And we're going to continue doing this every Sunday. And maybe you want your family to be with you in the church on the 15th. Let's pray for your family. In fact, tomorrow when, we come to, when you come to the church, we're going to start a purpose together that will be done all over the world for the salvation of our family in the faith of Rahab. Rahab who was an example of faith and salvation. But now let's pray for the salvation of your family because I believe there are people in your home who are suffering and who want to ask for help. Not everybody who suffers asks for help. There are people who are suffering and they have taken that suffering as something normal. But when the person manifests faith, everything can change in that moment. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My God, when we want, when we have decided that we want help, then faith is manifested because Bartimaeus had made up his mind that he was going to receive help, that he was going to be heard by the Lord Jesus. He had determined that in his mind already. And so even when people tried to quiet him, to, to, to shut him down, even people who were supposed to bring him to you, my Lord, they tried to shut him down. But in his mind, he, he had already decided that that was going to be his moment. So the more they tried to shut him down, the more 
he cried out for help. It, it was too late for Satan to tell him that he couldn't be helped. And when a person decides, determines that they will receive help from above, it's too late for the devil. It's too late for the problem. And things have to change. And now, my God, I pray for this person that they've purposed within their hearts that on the 15th, they will receive help, their family will receive help, and it will be too late, my God, for the devil to try to stop what our faith has put in motion. So now, my Lord, I determine, like Bartimaeus was answered, this person and their family and their loved ones and their, their friends and colleagues and neighbors. My Lord, they all, those who enter through the doors of the church, they will receive help. The help that they need. Not the help that they want necessarily, but the help that they need. We bless right now your people and your church in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Very well. I believe that you are blessed. And now a message to all the people of Finsbury Park, VYG, assistants, groups. Tomorrow at 4 p.m., I will be going out with a group to evangelize. Do you want to join me? Myself, Pastor Miguel, some of the pastors. Uh, actually, Pastor Miguel probably not because he'll be here doing the 4 p.m., the 3 p.m. service. Maybe he can make it after, afterwards together with us. But 4 p.m., I'll be leaving with a group, a large group. We're going to have pastors going to different areas to evangelize, different forms of evangelism. 4 p.m., myself, I'll be leaving to evangelize. You who are from Finsbury Park, join me if you can. We are going to go to look in the streets, everywhere, for people who are desperate for help. And if they want help, if they ask for help, they'll receive the help that they need. All right? It was a pleasure having all of you here with us tonight. I want to thank Pastor Reese from coming here from our church in Hackney. Pastor Reese, what is the address of the church in Hackney? I'm 20 Brent House Road, E96QG. And the people can come to see you tomorrow if they want to bring a friend, if they want to bring someone to receive prayer, advice. Yes, Bishop. I'm going to be there the whole day, doing the services the whole day, 7, 10, 3, and 7, 13 in the evening. I'll be available. Amen. Dear friends, may God bless you abundantly. We'll see you tomorrow here for Be Inspired Live. Bye-bye. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio.